you printed off your ERB. What is this thing? Where do I find it? Who fixes it? What does it do for me? I'm gonna tell you exactly what your enlisted record brief does for you right now. All right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph French. On today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to read through your ERB and what it all means. All right, if you like the channel, hit that like button for me. Comment below, be sure to comment you back. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Let's jump right into the episode. All right, your ERB is your enlisted records brief. It's what you've done, how you've done it, and when you've done it in the United States military, all in one brief. This is a record brief that you're going to need throughout your military career. It's gonna be something you need to update continuously throughout your military career and continuously scan to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. Now in the next clip, I'm gonna take you on a walkthrough through your ERB. So what I'm gonna tell you right now is if you know how to do it, go to your AKO and print out your ERB. I'm gonna start counting, hurry up. Five, four, three, now. All right, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come to your AKO homepage and down in the bottom right corner on the front right tiles is your ERB, your enlisted record brief. Once you log into your AKO, this is what it's gonna look like, click that. Once you click that, it's gonna say view my SRB. That's your link to click that. If you wanna have show sex and race, you can click that and show your picture, slower download, you can have that so you have your DA photo attached to it as well. At this time, go ahead and click that, open up your ERB. All right, for OPSEC purposes and safety purposes, I have whited out everything on my ERB but a few select things. But this is what your enlisted record brief is gonna look like. At this time, hopefully you have yours pulled up and it's ready to rock and roll and you can follow along with me. I'm gonna start up at the top left since it's a lot of information. First thing you see over here is the brief date. That's the day you printed this ERB and how current it is, followed by your name, your rank, and your date of rank. I whited out the date of rank, so your date of rank will be there as well. Your primary MOS, your social security should have only your last four, everything else X'd out. I get go ahead and did that for you there. Followed by your component. Now I'm gonna start in section one, assignment information. On here, you're gonna see your deployments, okay? For this purpose, again, I whited this out. You'll see your start and end date on your deployment, your country, your months in there, followed by all of that totaled up here on the side. When you go down below that, you'll see dwell time. Now, what is dwell time? Dwell time is any time not deployed. Then it'll show your months and days between your end of your last tour to currently that current date and show you how long it's been since you deployed. Now your DROs is your date estimated return from overseas and the DROS, the DROs, is going to be your date returned from overseas. Now when you go below that, date dependence arrived on service, okay, you're gonna have your primary primary MOS. If you do have a secondary MOS, it's right there. You'll have a bunch of your SQIs here if you do have some of those. Those can be some things as uh, special operations, instructor, drill sergeant, recruiter, you'll have all that SQI right there followed by your PDSI and your ASIs. You should have a bunch of ASIs. You'll pick those up as you go through the military. Um, those are things as MFT, MRT, um, all kinds of uh, identifiers, additional skill identifiers, air assault, all that will be in that section there. Bonus MOS, here's your bonus enlistment date. You'll be able to see that date there. Promotion points. These two sections right here will very rarely be updated. You need to check your PPW for that. But as you move up through the ranks and you go, go for your E7 look to E8 look, um, you'll have those dates in here from the day you were selected and your actual sequence number. The sequence number will not be on there anymore. It will just be two zeros because it's now moved on to the OML, which is something you can find on your ACT. Now on to here, you'll see your ASVAB. It'll have your date of your ASVAB right here, the last time you've taken it, followed by all of your scores here. This is a good section to check right here that you'll be able to see if you're able to get into some of those schools that you want to get into those airborne air assault any kind of technical school all of that right here now you get on to aea and dt this is huge this is your fence date and what i mean by fence is that's the date of when you'll actually be qualified to leave and leave post or leave and get a new unit leave in pcs so that is your date that you are fenced in until check that area there that's a big point for you anything underneath will be any flags you have whether that's flags for ABC program, adverse action, any kind of flag and code in this area right here. On the section two, security data. Up here you'll see I have a secret clearance. It'll have the dates of when it was started, when your next one's due. All of that is in this area right here. Section two is pretty simple. All right, this is section three here, the service data. On here is your basic active service date. Now everybody thinks that that's pretty much the day you started basic active service, which it is. Now for us active duty, it's easy to say our BASD. Now for promotion purposes, you need to go off your P 
P-E-B-D, your PEB. And your PEB is a date started getting paid. Okay, that's your date started getting paid. Basically, it stands for your pay entry base date. And this is the date you need to go off of for all of these promotions here. Specifically in these ones um, for private PB2, PFC, and specialists. They go off your PEB, not your BASD. Now, usually these two are the exact same for anybody active duty. Always check your PEB. Now your BESD, same thing for your BESD. Your ETS here, you're gonna see your ETS date, current ETS date of when you will be getting out of the military. Now your DIAMS, your DIAMS is the day you swore in. That's the day you swore in, okay? That's the date of initial entry military service. So basically that's the day you swore in, okay? Over here, you see your reenlistment eligibility. You'll see that on the bottom down here, days lost. That's more of a reservist and national guardist. You have a section for that. AGCM is your, uh, Army Good Conduct Medal, and this will be the date, last one you got it, and this will be the date that you're eligible again. Those are three years without any kind of uh, Article 15s, anything like that, that'll be in there. Now below, DOR, date of rank. The date you made these ranks, you'll be able to see them all in the following positions here. So this is an easy way to track um, some of your progress between ranks. On the section four in the corner here, you'll see personal family data. You'll see your date of birth, birthplace, country of citizenship, sex and race, you'll have that on there. Number of dependents and adults, one, I'm currently married with my son, and my religion, Roman Catholic, marital status, married, spouse, birthplace, US, EFMP, which exception family member program. Now that is a date on there I want to start, and if you're sponsoring anybody in that program. Now your last physical, physical exam, it'll be on there with that date, and your pulleys, if you're one, 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 all the way across the board, you're basically deployable physical category to the bottom down here with MRC is your medical readiness. This is going to talk about, you'll be MRC one, MRC two, MRC three, um, your medical readiness and all talking about your med pros and coming down to deployable here. Height and weight goes off your last APFT, ACFT and APFT. Now they just added this ACFT block in here. So that's coming. That's brand new. Um, but you're going to see both of those uh, dates and scores in there, as well as you see here, category. Home of record, mailing address, military spouse, social security, that's usually going to be pretty empty. Emergency data verified, and all these things are verified by your S1. Now, on to section five, come back right underneath the security data, is a foreign language. Whatever you speak, whatever, whatever foreign language you're good at and you're qualified at, it will all be stored in this section here. And the date of your D-Lab that qualifies that. Now, on to section six, it's right below that. You're going to see your MEL and MLS, that's military education. That's going to tell you whether you graduated SSD1, SSD2, anything from ALC, SLC, BLC. It's going to tell you you're graduated right here, or it'll say a sign. Below this, you're going to have all your schools and the achievement you may have. You're going to put in here, well, it's Commandant's List, Distinguished Honor Graduate, Distinguished Leader, and then the year it's completed all in this school section, military education. BMQ is your marksmanship qualifier. This is gonna show you how many points you have on your weapons and when you shot and fired and that current date is all posted in BMQ. Followed by on the very bottom of this is your correspondence hours and your total. I have currently 555. That will update continuously about every 48 hours after you complete classes. On the section seven, you see your civilian education. It's going to go into the top here. It's going to say whether it's high school graduate, college graduate, and then it's going to show where you graduated from and the year of, and the number of semester hours completed. Also adds in there technical certifications. It'll also show here your date certified, your date expired, but this is something you can go to armycool.com and you'll be able to find, typing in your MOS, technical certs for you to get that could equal 15 promotion points very quickly and fill this block that I see very, very commonly empty. All right, on to section eight, you're gonna have your awards here on the left and they're gonna be listed with a number on the side and the number on the side is just how many current awards you have of that. But this is your section for all your awards and decorations um, to include badges, airborne badges, drill sergeant badges, anything in here. Any award you have on your uniform goes in here, except for any foreign awards, they do not go in there. All right, onto the very bottom is section nine, assignment history. You can see on the left, date of loss and date of last PCS. This is gonna show you the last time you PCS. And on the right, it's gonna show you the date of your last NCBR. If you are an NCO, this will show you the last time that your last NCBR closed out. Below that, you're gonna see assignments. You're gonna see your assignment history. The very first line is a projection. So if you are currently on projected orders, you're on assignment. If it doesn't show up in your ass, your army satisfaction key, you can go on there and check and see if you're on assignment. And that will show there. Current will be a line across there telling you your current unit. 
You can see on here from what date, how many months, all right, your unit identifier and your organization, the station you're at, location, and the possible command that you're working under, and duty title. You need to make sure that you update your ERB assignment history to make sure that it reflects your actual path that you took in the United States military, starting with your basic training, your AIT, move on to your first unit, your second unit, third unit, and then this down here will also reflect your deployments. You will put a line in here that shows you deployed for seven months here, eight months here, four months here, and that will show you on that location and on that duty title, it will say FWD forward to whatever location, and that will coincide with what you have up here. Now, duty title is a big thing. Make sure that these duty titles match your NCUER duty title. So this is something that for my E6s going to E7, this is a big thing to link up to make sure that these two match. When you pull up your NCUER and it's from 2019, oh, here's the unit, 2019, I was this. You need to make sure that these two match. Now onto the last section, section 10, remarks. HIV, they'll have that on there. You have a date of that when you last did that and you have your date of your last photo taken for your DA photo. I did not print my DA photo and put it in here and download that copy. You can, but you can put your DA photo right down here once you click that X in the beginning. When you on here, it's gonna say anything that you're volunteered for, airborne volunteer, AIC, platoon sergeant, recruiting, drill sergeant preferred, all these things. You'll be able to update on your ask, your army satisfaction key. You'll be able to go to that website and update on their preferences of what you want that can help you when you get along the line of talking to branch about your next duty assignment. So that's your ERB right there. That's a quick overlook of it. That's what it looks like. That's how it operates. All right, so that's your enlisted record brief, your ERB, also known as your soldier record brief, your SRB, both are kind of the same thing at this point. Now, if you need to get anything updated, make an appointment with your S1 and get that fixed right away, right now. Because the one thing I'm gonna tell you about your ERB is it's your job to make sure it's up to date. It's your job to stay on top of it, not your S1s. They're gonna continuously update what they can, when they can, but it's your job as a soldier to make sure your ERB is accurate and correct. And trust me, when you get up to E6 to E7, E7 to E8, these are things that they're going to look at and say, these things are not accurate at all. That's how you're going to be ahead of your peers. That's how you're going to continuously show that you're paying attention to detail and you're ahead of the curve. And for today, that's the drill.